You know, it's kind of crazy that today is August the 2nd. We're almost exactly three weeks out from, from tryouts, from the start of school, all that stuff. Kind of sinks in, kind of makes you wonder, like, am I given everything I got? Because we're getting down to crunch time here, and there are no days where we're going to be half-assing stuff. With skates, I'm getting to the point now where we're really trying to hammer down every minor detail in my game. In the gym, we are pushing for every single game. That's kind of what today's video is about. I don't know what exactly I'm going to call it. The working title right now is getting down on the wire. That's probably not going to be the end video title. And in the words of the great Nasher 61, Ah! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go. Hey, summer training. How's it been? Travis works really hard. I said that last time? Yeah, you said exactly that last time. Well, you do work really hard. Oh, thank you. Okay, goodbye. Have a good day. I think it's human nature, though, to ask myself or, or ask the question, is this all for nothing? I don't like being negative. I know the videos have been trying to be happier as of late, but you can't help but not ask yourself, is this all for nothing? When I signed a pro trout offer the other day as a backup plan in case college doesn't work out, but I'm not signed to a college deal, and we're beginning of August. So at this point in time, August 2019, honestly kind of a crazy off season. You know, I told my college team from last season at Vancouver Island University, hey, I'm not coming back for next season. So that option's off the table. Got offered a tryout with a U Sport team that's coming up in about three weeks. I already did a pro tryout in Alabama uh, in the SPHL for the Birmingham Bulls. Didn't go the way I wanted, although there was some hope with them telling me that, hey, you played two more years of college hockey, we would love to have you out here. And you know, obviously being considered for the team, not signing two years in advance, because that's absolutely ridiculous. I also recently signed a pro trial offer in Columbus for a team in the FPHL, the Columbus River Dragons, I believe was the team name. That's just a backup option if collegiate level hockey doesn't work out. Lots of workouts, been working out like three, four days a week lately. It's absolutely been nuts. The ice times, working with my goalie coach in BC, working with Guy St. Vincent here in Winnipeg. My last season at VIU, I'm gonna be honest, it did not go the way that I wanted. Start to finish, nothing, it felt like nothing could go right for me. And I'm not gonna sit here and blame the coaches, I'm not gonna blame the other players. I'm gonna say that I fucked up. I did not execute the way that I should have. I did not execute the way that I was potentially able to if I if I had the right mentality, the right mindset on my head or in my head, I should say. And with that said too, I feel like every single week I'm getting better. I've had the opportunity to skate with this U Sport team once a week for the past, as of this point in time, about five weeks, give or take in that ballpark. Uh, we skate for about an hour, we work out for about an hour and a half. Every week I'm getting smarter, I feel I'm getting more mature mentally about how I handle these guys. And 
I want you to keep in mind too that these guys are so freaking good. Some of these guys are 23, 24, 25, 26. They've played games in the pro. They've played games in the SPHL and the East Coast. There's even one guy, I think he was about a point, almost a point and a half per game in the East Coast in the time that he spent there. Although he's coming back here. These guys are so good. You don't have to give them anything and they can take nothing and turn it into a great play and make you look silly. So it's been a very difficult transition to understand how these guys work and understanding what I can and cannot get away with. Again, hindsight is 2020. It's easy for me to say now, there's a lot of bad habits that I had before that just don't work here. It's just simply, it does not work with guys that can shoot the puck this well and their hockey queue is next level. They're playing on the East Coast and the SPHL for a reason. And I'm just trying to get my foot in the door. I used to think that, you know, I was a big guy and I was a guy who, who was not the strongest in the team, but one of the stronger guys, one of the bigger guys. Um, and that I was working hard, but I see some of these guys Holy shit, I was not working hard enough, clearly. Because these guys are here, I'm down here. But that's a part of the learning process. It's cliche, but I'm very excited about the opportunity ahead. Although, yes, we are on the topic of not too long in the past and thinking about all that kind of stuff. I did really like this hat that I got from the team, though. Nice hat. We'll miss the team, though. We'll miss Nanaimo. We'll miss BC. Focus on more better opportunities in the future, though. Just want to remind you that the block is still on sale. September 25th to 30th, 25% off. Promo code TRAVSUCKS will save you the money. The block is fantastic finger protection, prevents injuries from pucks riding at the paddle. Also great grip there. Pick one up, link in the description. So we're gonna do another Q&A today. Uh, Q&A has been going awesome. I actually got a lot of questions the other day on another Instagram poll. Collins underscore Brian, he asked, who is the best personal trainer, fitness trainer you have ever had in your life? Well, the answer is me, of course. He's actually my trainer. He's the one who asked it. Ask the question. And he enjoys every second he spends with me all the time. Not really, but. Now, David.8086 asks, why do you prefer a strike bar over the cat eye? Now, I'm working on a video, as of this moment in time of filming this, I'm working on a video about the cat eye versus straight bar and why I prefer the straight bar. That'll be a whole different video topic that's dedicated to it. But short answer is the sight lines I find are better on a straight bar. The cat eye, I don't feel safe in. That is why I prefer the straight bar over the cat eye cake. Tiger the tiger underscore official. And he asked, what is your main goal in being a goalie? I would say, obviously I want to stay in the college game. I want to finish my four years of college hockey. Uh, I'd like to play pro hockey if that was an opportunity that did present itself. Uh, that is, I guess, my main goal in being a goalie as of right now. How old were you when you got inspired to be a goalie? Uh, I was about 10 years old, nine years old, give or take. I remember I saw a poster of Mika Kiprasov when I was nine years old. And that was my kind of calling to say, you gotta be a goalie, this is cool, this is what you're meant to do. Jose Theodore was actually the goalie that got me inspired to truly fulfill this idea that I wanted to become a goalie. What is the best small brand that you have ever used? Uh, I love my butt ends grips. I love my pro laces toe ties. I love my block uh, knuckle guard. Underscore Troy Callahan asks, difference of a game ready in a pro glove when buying. Uh, pro Glove is gonna have a little bit more padding. I've never used a pro palm in my life. I've only used game ready palms and I'm still playing college hockey. Unless you're playing pro where you're on the ice seven days a week for 10 months out of the year, you probably don't need a Pro Glove. The Pro would be for practice or the practice glove would be for practice and the game would be for the game. Uh, until you're at that level, you're good with the game ready glove. This next one is actually really good. A underscore Dor Doro Shape. Sorry, I totally butchered that. Asks, how do you gain exposure as a young goalie? Now this is an amazing question, first off. Second off, your play is going to do a lot of the work as far as gaining exposure goes. You can't get exposure and get interest from top teams if you suck. Some things you can do to help your case is for example, reaching out to teams, letting them know, hey, this is who I am. I actually physically exist. I know it sounds dumb, it's a good way to start. Going to different camps, whether it be development camp, spring camp, or main camp in the fall, all good for getting your name out there, getting your foot in the door, and gaining some exposure in a sense. You could go to one camp, get cut, another scout is at that camp, and they bring you on board for their camp. You never know what can happen in the hockey world. It is a very crazy, crazy world. Uh, that is my tip for how to get more exposure as a young goalie. Cable Long underscore asks, how many sticks have you broken? I've broken a lot of sticks, dude. I break probably six to eight sticks a year in that ballpark. Uh, times that by 10 years, that's a lot of sticks. 50 dot hockey asks, what's your favorite break in a glove and why? I'm gonna go 600 degree break for a glove because I can puck handle and I can catch pucks with it. The 580 is more of a puck handling glove. The 590 is more of a catching glove. That 600 is somewhere perfectly in between. Feels very natural like a baseball glove, which is why I love a 600 and my 70 degree break in the Warrior G4 glove. Hockey underscore Joe Beast, how do you attach your GoPro to the back of the net? I don't use the puck guy anymore. I actually use a different GoPro mount. If you watch my GoPro tips video for using it for hockey, you'll find out every secret that I've ever had for setting up GoPros for hockey. 
just myself plug to you. So I'd like to talk to you about something that's called sideline swap. You've probably heard about it before. Thank me later for all the cash that you make and the money that you save buying gear. I will see you in the next video.